In 26 years of ministry, my guests saw less than 10 minor healings. Suddenly, this all changed. He spoke and seven deaf people could hear. He says, anything he can do, you can do too. Can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, Tony Kemp, was just like you. And now he's moving in such miracles. I mean, he had one meeting in which seven deaf people got their hearing back. Tony, uh, you went how long without seeing miracles like this? You've been in ministry how long? Uh, at that time, before that miracle, I had been... I had been in ministry 26 years. Uh, I had received the Messiah Jesus in 1972. I had become a deacon, uh, which means you're serving in the church. I had become a youth pastor, which means you work with young people. Several years, I had become an associate pastor, a, a parish pastor, which means you uh, met the needs of people in the church and, and had preached the good news concerning Jesus the Messiah for years, saw so maybe in 26 years, uh, Maybe a hundred people uh, received Jesus into their hearts. I had prayed for many sick people, said, but only saw maybe 10 people healed. And the 10 that I did see healed by Jesus, headaches, stomach aches, back aches, no serious diseases like the blind, the deaf, the crippled. So you know what a lot of people do, Tony, when that occurs? They come up with a new theology. And the new theology is uh, God's not doing the same thing today that he did back then. I don't quite understand it, but he's not. But you didn't come up with that. You came up with something is wrong. And how in the world did you start watching It's Supernatural television? Well, I began with looking at the ministry of the Messiah Jesus. I began to look in the Bible, the Word of God, and what it says. I looked at the book of Acts and what it said the apostles did. And then I began to go on a search. And when I was searching, Sid, I came across your program and I began to listen to your interviews with your various guests. And I began to see what God was doing for them and what God was doing in them and through them. And the thing that struck me was that they were just ordinary people. There, there didn't seem to be anything extraordinary about them. And I thought, these people are like me, and look what God is doing for them, in them, and through them. And if God can use them, God can use me. And so what I did, Sid, is I actually went on the internet, and I began to watch your program five to eight hours a day. And I began to be saturated with the How reality. many days a week? Oh, five days a week, easily. That Sometimes. was a full-time job. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And I was a full-time pastor. And, and, and the people in my congregation and the other ministers who work with me, they understood that I was chasing God. And so nobody complained because we want our pastor to actually know God and get a hold of God. And so they understood, so nobody complained. What happened is after, you know, maybe a couple of years, they began to see the results of my chasing God. Okay, so he sees one of my guests and he relates to the fellow. And he said, oh, boy, I'd like to meet him. And a series of circumstances occur uh, that he has lunch with this particular guest. And this, it, it, and what did you ask him at lunch, Dr. Rennie McLean? That was who he uh, had lunch with. Well, first I saw him on your program and he made this statement. You court the Lord for Jesus through your worship. worship. You court the Lord. And when he made that statement, and that struck a chord in, church, in me. And so I knew mean. this pastor. This pastor was also a businessman. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I never asked him to. He actually called Dr. McLean's office, talked with his wife. Uh, Dr. McLean changed his flight schedule. I'm a total stranger just to meet with me. And so uh, we actually brought a tape recorder set it down at the table and said, talk 
to us about the supernatural. And so that's what occurred. And then after that, you had a speaking assignment, and did you have, did you have a clue that something so supernatural was going to happen? Well, he, one of the things that Dr. McLean stressed was you court the Lord through worship, and essentially what that means is, is the Lord inhales your praise, he exhales his presence, he inhales your worship, he exhales his glory. And in the presence and the glory of God is when miracles happen. And so I just began sharing the word that Jesus is a healer, a miracle worker, and that God does miracles today. And so people began to hear the word, and there were seven deaf people in the service who came forward, and I prayed for them in the name of the Messiah Jesus, and instantly every single one of them heard. Now, see, this had never happened to me before, but I, but I began to say the word works. What I'm reading about in the Word of God, in the life of Jesus the Messiah, I'm now seeing in my own life. And so what I heard your, your, the people that you interview talk about, now it was my experience. And one of the things that is so wonderful is the way God has prepared Tony to understand worship. Now, when you and I think of worship, we think of uh, a, a church service where there is worship and then there is uh, announcements, and then there's offering, and then there's the message. Uh, but Tony, that's not what God's showing you, is right, it? Right, right. Whenever we follow the teaching of the Messiah Jesus and do what His Word says, everything we do is worship. So if I pray to the Father in the name of Yeshua, that's worship. If I praise God, that's worship. If I, if I just tell God, I love you in the name of the Messiah Jesus, that's worship. But then when I just love my wife, because the Word of God says, husbands, love your wives, God considers that as worship. If I love my natural child or my spiritual children, because Jesus said, in the very same way I've loved you, love one another, God considers that worship. And so the Word of God says this, that whatever you do, talking, living, life, do it in the name of the Messiah Jesus and to God's glory, but then what, that's uh, all worship. What I'm hearing you say is worship is walking in love 24-7. Yes. That's what Tony is saying. But I have to tell you, Tony, I don't meet too many people that walk in love like you do. How do you walk in such love? What? Well, I mean, give me some clues. Okay. What happened, Sid, was in 1989, I had an experience with God that changed my life. Hold that thought. We'll be right back after this word. Supernatural to it's supernatural. Are you frustrated that you are not seeing in your life the kind of miracles, signs, and wonders you've read about in the Bible? Are you desperate for the supernatural of God in your life? Are you tired of praying and never seeing results? Tony Kemp wants to impart to you the keys to unlock an open heaven where miracles, healing, and answers to prayers are commonplace. Call now and receive Tony Kemp's three-part audio CD teaching series, Worship, Bringing Heaven to Earth. Yours for a donation of $26. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number one. 1297. Through this easy to follow biblically based audio CD series, you'll learn how to worship God in a new powerful way so that God will send you angels of provision, impart revelation for every area of your life, transport you to a supernatural place where your every need is met, open up the windows of heaven, and so much more. You'll learn that worship is the key to bring the hand of God out of heaven to earth. And Tony will even pray for you to be brought into the sound and glory of God. Don't miss out on getting Tony Kemp's three-part audio CD teaching series, Worship, Bringing Heaven to Earth. Yours for a donation of $26. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1297. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1297 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural! Hello, Sid Roth here with Tony Kemp. And uh, Tony, I have to tell you, when I interviewed you on the radio, mm -hmm. I felt such love 
coming out of you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I felt such a peace of God coming out of you. It provoked me to jealousy. It literally did. Mm -hmm. And I want to walk in that. And I want you to be walking in that kind of love. Because when you're walking in that kind of love, you're walking in God. And when you're walking in with God, you got it all. And when you're not walking in God, you don't have anything. Tony, you said something happened to you in 1989. Tell me about that. Four o'clock in the morning in the month of December 1989, I had an angel come to me and immediately said, my spirit left my body and we went up through the heavens. Uh, one thing I should add, Sid, is that there were a number of other uh, souls who had departed from their bodies but their destination was obviously not heaven. But the angel took me into heaven. Just, just out of curiosity, how did you know their destination wasn't heaven? Um, they, there was a portal, a, an opening, a tunnel that they went into. And um, in, when, when, you're, when you're out of your body, all your senses are, how should I say this? You have the ability to see further hear more, feel more, and I could see that they were going to the lake of fire. Could you see their reactions? No, no, because they were, they were, I could see their departure into the tunnel toward the lake of fire. Okay, so in the meantime, you're yes. going up, they're going into the tunnel, yes. what's happening to you? Uh, the angel and I are speeding, speeding through the heavens very, very quickly and uh, so fast that I really couldn't see the planets or the stars. And then we landed in heaven. Um, I, I, I do want to say this to people because I think this is very, very important. People need to really give themselves the Messiah Jesus and go to heaven. And here's the first reason why. There's such joy there. Uh, the apostle Peter said, it is joy uh, unspeakable and full of glory. My experience, I would say it this way, it's joy indescribable and full of glory. And the minute I landed in heaven, said this joy exploded on the inside of me. Mm. Yes, there's joy. If I could say this, uh, the Lord is full of joy himself, mm. okay? And, and the people are full of joy, but this joy exploded on the inside of me and it was completely overwhelming. And so when uh, the Hebrew writer says, the joy of the Lord is your strength, it's really true. I mean, there's life in heaven. And so this joy is what people are looking for on the earth. And the key to this joy is, is, is giving yourself to the Messiah Jesus and developing a relationship with him. So that's the first thing I want to say to people. Uh, the next thing I want to say to people is I was taken uh, to the heavenly tabernacle, the heavenly temple. And there was a door that was, and the only way I know how to describe this, Sid, is to say it was uh, open and closed at the same time, but it was only open by appointment only. And the angel stood before me and he walked through the door and I just knew I'm supposed to follow this angel. When I follow this angel into this heavenly tabernacle, this heavenly temple, I'm in a courtroom, and there is God Almighty sitting in the seat of the judge, the throne of God. And I could not see uh, God Almighty clearly. I saw this brilliant white light, this being of light, and this glory cloud that surrounded him. And I knew that I was in the presence of God Almighty. The next thing I did, said is I looked to my right because I just felt it's an interesting thing about when you're in heaven, you just, sometimes you just know things. You just know what you're supposed to do. And I looked to my right, and there I saw the Messiah Jesus. As my heavenly attorney, as my heavenly representative, as my great high priest, and as my uh, intercessor. And um, uh, Jesus is the loveliest um, person I've ever seen. And, um, so you were, you were like in a heavenly courtroom. A heavenly courtroom. And you were given insight into what we're going to be judged on here on earth. 